right, we know that, Jim. Uh, oh, live yes. shot from Mount Doug. Mount Doug, Oak Bay. Nice to see you. It's been a while. Nice to see you as well. Missed you, but yeah. had a lot of fun in Ottawa. Well, let's see. You were at the All Star Game. Mm -hmm. You were at the Red Wings game in That's Vancouver. Right. You were at the Zonta Ball, the Nanaimo Sports Awards, Chick Bowl. And now I'm back. Now you're back. Good I'm to have you. Good to be back, Hudson. Back in the game. And you know, this is a very special day for a couple of Vancouver Island's elite athletes. Tyson Berry is making his debut tonight with the Colorado Avalanche. And Steve Nash is celebrating his 38th birthday. You know, Nash proved again last night that age ain't nothing but a number, scoring 24 points and adding 11 assists in the win over the Atlanta Hawks. Not bad for a guy who started his career on the hardwood at Mount Douglas High School. And yes, that is where we find our very own Jordan Cunningham. George. Thank you, Myra. Yes, it was a, a brief career. Uh, two months, I think, he spent here at Mount Doug, but uh, inspiring for Steve Nash. But that is another story. Actually, random, interesting Nash fact, he was his high school chess champion at St. Mike's. The guy was good at everything. Kind of sickening, actually. Uh, massive night of basketball going on on the girls' side, on the boys' side. Joining me to talk about uh, this matchup of the uh, city's top two teams on the girls' side is a man who has uh, dedicated his life to the uh, women's round of basketball. Uh, you know him from the Uvic Bikes, from the Oak Bay Bays, Mitch Gudgeon, assistant coach uh, with Oak Bay. Uh, battle of undefeated squads tonight. Yeah, it should be a great game tonight. Um, you know, Mount Doug is always one of those teams that comes in. They're scrappy, just as our coach described them as. Uh, they'll probably like to push the ball a bit. Uh, we're definitely a lot bigger than they are, but, uh, you know, they'll play to their strengths and we'll play to ours. And uh, I think we're, uh, we're looking at some footage here of the guys game a couple of uh, weeks ago, uh, dueling buzzer beaters. It always seems to be a bit of drama between these squads. Uh, why don't you set it up tonight? Uh, definitely uh, aspirations of the BCs for you guys. Uh, would you be surprised uh, seeing Mount Doug there as well? No, definitely not. Um, you know, they're another great team on the island. Uh, there's definitely a ton of, ton of potential them to make it there. Uh, for us, obviously, we want to we want to be there, and we want to be one of the top teams, hopefully the top team by the end of the year. Uh, our girls have put in a ton of time and a ton of effort, and uh, they've been working hard to to accomplish that goal. We've seen Mitch, the player. What does Mitch, the coach, bring to the table? Uh, I'm definitely the uh, the good cop out of the two of us, Rob and I. Um, you know, he's always the one uh, laying down the lumber. Uh, but uh, for me. No, I, I personally just enjoy coaching the girls. It's a, it's a ton of uh, ton of fun to coach them. It's a great group of girls too, and uh, you know they're always positive, always work really hard. It's just you know all you can really ask for. Well, good luck to you, uh, good coach Mitch Gudgeon, and uh, continued success. Thanks a lot. All right, Mitch Gudgeon, Myra, uh, we know him from the bikes, and uh, Mitch's softer side on display here. We will have uh, full highlights of the uh, girls' game and plenty of highlights from the boys' game coming up tonight at 11. All right, thank you very much, Jordan. Enjoy the girls' game. Well, in 2011, he was called upon to lead the Kelowna Rockets and came within one win of the Memorial Cup Championship. 2011, Team Canada came calling for his services at the World Junior Hockey Championship on February 4th, 2012. Another day that Tyson Berry will never forget, the day he got the call to the NHL. Berry makes his Colorado Avalanche debut tonight against the Chicago Blackhawks. I was just laying in bed. Uh, I thought I was going back to sleep for a nap for my game down in uh, Erie, but... Uh, you know, got the call and it was, uh, you know, kind of a crazy feeling. It was something that, uh, you know, I've been waiting for for a while and it was, you know, a real shock for me considering, uh, you know, they had eight healthy D up and everything seemed to be, uh, you know, normal up top and no injuries or anything. And then it kind of came out of the blue and it was, uh, you know, it was a real nice surprise. You know, I'm more excited than nervous, I think, but uh, I think tonight, uh, you know, before the game, I'll probably, I'll probably be feeling a little more, but I'm just excited right now and uh, trying to, you know, take it as a normal game as much as I can. Well, Victoria Royals defenseman Tyler Stahl may also be experiencing a case of the nerves tonight. Stahl hasn't played since October 1st when he suffered a concussion. He'll be paired up on the blue line with Jesse Zadragon as the Royals host the Everett Silvertips. I'm excited to be back with the guys and uh, getting a game tonight, so it should be really fun. Where's your head right now? Uh, it's kind of all over the place. I haven't played in a while, so a little nervous and anxious, but uh, it'll be good once I get a uh, the first few shifts in. He's excited, and, you know, he's got to temper that a little bit. Uh, he hasn't played in pretty much, you know, almost a year if you take out the two games there, and, and so he's really got to play a simple game and not try and do too much. Well, there could be a feeling out period by both teams tonight. This is the first of four matchups this season between the Royals and the Silver Tips. Victoria has jumped into seventh spot in the Western Conference. Everett sits in the basement, but that's just seven points back. Coach Habscheid knows how desperate the Silver Tips club is, and they will have the Royals' respect. They played really well recently. They've won in Kelowna. They won twice up in Prince George, and 
they just finished playing uh, Portland and outshot them and, and lost. So we have a lot of respect for them. They're, they've played well recently, and these are two big points. You know, even though there's 20 games left, playoffs start early, and these are crucial points. The lacrosse season is still a few months away, but coaches and GMs from the Western Lacrosse Association gathered on the mainland yesterday to bolster their lineups for the 2012 season at the annual draft. The Nanaimo Timbermen, well, they got their man with the seventh overall pick. Our first choice was Cody Bremner, um, and he was, he was the guy that we had targeted uh, for our first selection, and uh, we were lucky enough to be able to, to get him at uh, number seven. And we were just uh, thankful that he was still there. So uh, we, we think he's going to be a perfect fit for our needs. And he's WLA ready. Indeed he is. Bremner played in just 11 regular season games with the junior team in in 2011, recording 38 points. He's currently in a sophomore season at Cornell University where he accepted an NCAA lacrosse scholarship. Cody is also a pretty decent hockey player, an all-star in 2008 in the BCHL and a point a game forward in his final season with the Nanaimo Clippers. He could see a lot of floor time in his first full season in the senior ranks. He's excited, yeah. Yeah, we talked to him the night before the draft and uh, he was excited that uh, we had him targeted and he was hoping that we were going to be able to get him here. He, he's a real smart player. He, he sees the floor real well. He, he can go to the net. He's got an inside game and uh, he, he can score you some goals but, but he can feed the ball as well and uh, he uh, plays both, he can play both ends of the floor and uh, he's just an all-around ball player. He's been well coached all the way up and uh, that's evident in, in the skill set that he brings. The Van Osh ring from Nanaimo continues to rock the rings at the Junior National Curling Championships. The ladies improved to 6-1 and one tonight after downing Newfoundland 12-3. They are in second spot behind undefeated Alberta. And it looks like Victoria's Josh Hozak rank may have finally got their first win. They are leading Newfoundland 4-3 in the 10th and coming home with the hammer. So good luck to them. And then, of course, in Parksville tomorrow starts the men's BC playdowns and the winner goes to the Briar. So. All right, it's time. Mm -hmm. Exciting time on the pebble dice. The old pebble dice. All right, my thank you. You're welcome.